This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University. And today I wanted to talk more about the ship coins that are getting flushed. We're seeing complete carnage in crypto land as we speak. And this is something that we've been predicting on this channel for quite some time, talking about how the SEC was coming for crypto and how you better get out of your crypto and get into Bitcoin. Well, this happened really in full force this last week with the SEC suing both Coinbase and Binance. And in the process, mentioning a lot of crypto that people were maintaining were somehow commodities or something else. But it turns out that the SEC views them as unregistered securities. And this matters because they are about to be delisted from all U.S. exchanges and be be uh, forced out of the country, be forced away from the deepest capital liquidity pools in the world, which is the U.S. markets. So I'm going to link to the SEC versus Binance complaint in the description notes below. But right here, I wanted to highlight for securities that were mentioned here that are now completely uh, imploding. There's BNB, which is the exchange token for Binance. There's Solana, which we've talked about many times and we're going to talk about later in this video. There's Cardano and there's Matic. We are hearing news that market makers are pulling out of Binance. It makes sense if you think the exchange is going under. And one way to measure the exchange going under is BNB going down, as we're going to talk about. But if you think the exchange is going under, you're going to pull all your capital. You're going to stop making a market. In other words, buying and selling on there to provide liquidity. And as a result, we've got very, very liquid, very little liquidity there. And of course, it's a weekend, which normally has lower liquidity as well. And what it appears is happening is we're seeing crypto hedge funds trying to dump their positions and everyone is rushing for the exits at the same time. As I said, if BNB fails, then it's quite likely that Binance itself will fail, not just Binance US, which is almost certainly going to be forced out of the country and has already stopped accepting US dollar deposits. But if if BNB fails, which is the exchange token, we can expect, expect Binance itself globally to implode. This is something that happened to FTX, where their whole house of cards was built on their exchange token FTT. And once FTT broke, it completely brought down FTX. And I think this is one reason that crypto hedge funds and market makers on Binance are running for the exits. We can see that BNB, the Binance token, which really has a, a value of zero, this isn't even equity in the parent company. This is just a, an exchange token. And if, uh, if something happens to Binance, this is obviously worth zero. It's a highly centralized token. But this is the thing to watch if you wonder whether Binance is about to get wiped off the face of the earth. But we're also seeing hedge funds and crypto investors flee from all of these unregistered securities. And that's clearly what they are. They were issued by centralized groups of people trying to pretend not to be corporations. But that's, in fact, uh, what, what they were. And they were issued with expectation of profit, as we're going to see. Uh, Polygon, Matic is another one, down 27%. We saw Solana's down almost 23%, Matic down 27%. Cardano, these are all the main tokens that were named in the SEC complaint versus Binance. Cardano down 22%. And in the process, we're seeing one exchange after another delist these tokens. So Robinhood yesterday ended support for Solana, Polygon, Cardano amid this crackdown. Now Cardano has come out. This is really a, a funny headline because the parent company has basically come out and said our token our token that we issued to raise capital is not a security. This doesn't this is not a very good look when you're actually the same company that was listed in the SEC complaint. They did they played some arbitrage games so they issued their token in Hong Kong, etc. This doesn't matter if you're going to offer your your token to US investors. It cannot be uh, something that was sold uh, under the Howey test to raise to raise capital and fund uh, crypto development. So this is people in the Cardano community are slowly waking up to this. Here's Marmaduke off a cliff. What a joke. Been defending and fighting FUD for almost six years. We keep getting hammered. WTF did Cardano do to cause such hostility? This is the ignorance in the crypto uh, in the crypto space. And this is one reason that I'm happy the SEC is taking action because you have a lot of very naive, uneducated re retail investors who've been completely getting wrecked in the space as the founders uh, dump on them. And we're seeing, we're seeing quite a bit of pain. We're also seeing this among former Bitcoin maximalists. A lot of you have asked me what's happened to Nick Carter. I have a lot of respect for Nick. He is a very 
a very smart individual, but he's basically uh, gone off the deep end in the past couple months. He now calls himself a Bitcoin cult escapee. If we go back and look what he used to say, he designated himself as a Bitcoin maximalist. And he said, basically, if you call someone a Bitcoin maximalist, you are probably someone who's just printed up a token and want to dump it on other people. We can see previous examples here from Corey Clipston. Uh, where Nick Carter is going after CZ, the founder of Binance. CZ moralizing about the need to play ball with regulators is comical. How about not listing an ocean of literal trash? Did that occur to you? And so he's obviously was a Bitcoin maxi at that point. Unfortunately, things changed as he raised one crypto fund after another. And as Corey points out in this tweet, incentives matter, set up your incentives to align with truth or you'll end up spouting lies for a living. Now, I would encourage you guys not to pile on Nick. I think he still has a lot to offer to the space, and um, I feel sorry for him for what's happening. If you take a look at what the pressure that he's probably under, here's a tweet from Andrew Update Gensler. Gary Gensler, head of the SEC, isn't finished. Multiple sources claiming that his next targets are low, mid-level crypto VCs, which would be people like Nick Carter. VC chatter is focused around the fact that Gary Gensler is currently unpredictable and can't be controlled. These are easy, no downside targets for someone with continued political aspirations. So we could expect lawsuits against Castle Island Ventures, which is Nick's fund. If you take a look at their portfolio, it's full of garbage like this, like earning products on crypto. And so again, this is not to pile on Nick, but this is more to explain the direction that he's taken. And uh, as I said, I think he's a very smart guy. He's done a lot of great work on Bitcoin over the years. If you go back and read his old essays, there's a lot of value there. But this is all just more by way of explanation. If you wonder why he's lashing out at Bitcoin maximalists, he's doing it basically because we were right. We were also right about Solana. I warned you over a year ago that Solana billionaires like David Sachs and Chamath and all these uh, Silicon Valley guys were basically dumping their Solana on you and laughing about it. Now this is reaching the more general press. Doomberg's written about it. And all these VCs who pump Solana could be in serious, serious trouble for what they did because they basically did pump and dumps. Meanwhile, what is Vitalik doing? Completely tone deaf in this environment. While the SEC is going after things like Cardano saying, you can't be a digital commodity if you have a founder and a roadmap. What did Vitalik decide to do? He decided to release another roadmap just to demonstrate to the world how centralized Ethereum is, how it is under a centralized founder, and how it has a roadmap. If you're crude oil, if you're wheat, if you're silver, if you're corn, you don't have a roadmap because you're a commodity. If you're Bitcoin, you don't have a roadmap because you're a decentralized mess. There's no one in control. By contrast, we can see how centralized this is. And people who think that the SEC is not, is not coming for Ethereum next are extremely, extremely naive. The SEC, the SEC will come for Ethereum. Vitalik Buterin, Joe Lubin, the Ethereum Foundation, all these groups will be personally sued in the coming months. I think at the SEC is just taking their time to make sure they have a, a watertight case this was an interesting uh, chart that someone shared with me. This is the crypto total market cap, excluding Bitcoin. And we can see how it's lost $36 billion worth of value just in the past uh, 24 hours or so. If we scroll out, this gives us a really good idea about Bitcoin dominance, which is a little bit of a, a misleading metric in itself because these metrics always include US dollar stable coins, et cetera. I made videos about why, why Bitcoin dominance is not the best way of thinking about this space, but it's still interesting to see the whole crypto market apart from Bitcoin mean revert back to lower levels. And if we take a look, the total crypto market here, excluding Bitcoin, is about 515 billion. If we take a look at Bitcoin's market cap, it's about 500 billion. So crypto, all the crypto is uh, basically mean reverting back down. And I expect this to continue to sell off until the market cap of all this other crypto garbage is well, well below Bitcoin's market cap of 500 billion. There's only one crypto asset. There's only one digital scarcity, and that is Bitcoin. Everything else will be taken down. And if you're going to invest in a cryptocurrency, you might want to check and make sure whether it can withstand a full frontal government attack. They're coming for Bitcoin, but I think we have some time. And the more Bitcoiners we create in the meantime, the more political power we'll have and the less likely it will be that will face a full assault by the US government. 
If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.